okay good day students i believe you're having a wonderful time well i'm actually going to be doing a quick breakdown and, and, and a quick appraisal of the assessment that i give to you of which it's so pathetic that most of you didn't do well um i'll just do a quick breakdown of what the course is all about it's population genetics with bio 201 it's a very simple course an interesting course that i believe that most of you should pass without even stressing but well let's see how far we go in this in this class we're going to be considering um we're just we're going to be doing a quick um a breakdown of what the course is about then i would discuss the assessment i give to you then afterwards i will give you an assignment to do with the hopes that now you will do something better well um my screen is shared so if, if, if you can see what we have here is population genetics and basically we are saying population genetics is a branch of genetics that deals with what distribution of ch or change in frequency of alleles within population now the key term there is what is change in frequency let me bold it change in frequency and then within populations over time that's what it says so which means that if you are just discussing genetics as a general phenomenon that's not really what we're concerned about. What we are concerned about is genetics in a particular population. And it has to be over time because I believe that your parents gave birth to you. Um, you're going to give birth to um, the next generation. And the last five generations gave birth to your parents. So it's actually genetics over time. So what traits are you seeing in the population? That's what population genetics is talking about. We discussed about variables. We talked about the gene pool so it refers to the complete set of genetic information that is the alleles present within a population that was quite informative the gene pool is very very simple not something that should to stress anyone my my notes are simplified we talked about allele frequency now we say is a population proportion of a specific allele among the alleles of the particular gene in a population that was simple too we talked about gene frequency which formed the dominant part of our discussion Talked about how how you, you you check which one is is um, is most available in the population per time, and we define as a proportion of individuals in a population that have a specific genotype. That's what we said it is. Together, so basically, we discuss also the Hardy-Weinberg principle, a very simple principle that I just try to see how. How, how genes have been transmitted from one generation to another. I was said it is a mathematical model that predicts allele and gen genotype frequencies, how they, whether they will remain constant in a population from generation to generation with certain conditions though. I would say the conditions are simple. It's condition of mutation, said condition of what, migration, mating, natural selection, and then population size. However, the principle is a mathematical equation. It is simple and it's not something that is complicated. I gave it to my students. I told them that it is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1. That is actually what Aaron Weinberg is talking about. That if you have uh, um, the frequency of an allele, allele A, the first one, if you denote it to be P, you denote the, 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 the second allele to be Q, that's small letter Q, they are saying that by the time you, com you combine the square of the first allele, you add the two alleles, and then you square the second allele. Everything all together should give you one. That is what Harden Weinberg is saying. We also went for that to take very sweet examples where we looked at the applications. The first example we consider, we're talking about uh, in a population of 500 individuals, 300 mosaicos. I'm just doing a general breakdown of what your course is saying. So that you, so that, so that at least your mind refresh so that when we begin to discuss what the assessment was saying you wouldn't be confused we said uh, um you know it's usually said that um a lecturer will give um students very simple examples and then when it's time for test he will give them very very complicated things i feel your pains but basically by the time we are done you realize that you ought to have passed but just because you were too scared or you you were over prepared to write something complicated that's why you're taking you're taking off guard it is not like that now when we when we consider such examples we discuss how you can just look look at um, a particular uh, um, uh, um, genotype you know genotype method of two alleles so if it's a, a, a for example 
you have allele A, capital letter A, and allele small letter A. So all together they make they make up the genotype combination. So we are saying that for this example, you, you multiply uh, um, each of them by two because if, if you're having uh, homozygous dominant to be AA, homozygous recessive is small letter A, AA. And that was a wonderful example also. We went far to discuss gene behavior in the population, but that was not even uh, um, um, where the assessment came from. So we're going to talk about where the assessment actually came from. Now, let me, let's scroll down to, to the assessment basically. What does the question say? Very simple question. It says, in a community, in a small community, okay, where is, okay, good. It says, in a small community in your local government of origin, you observe that a formerly genetically diverse student population is now exhibiting a sharp increase in homozygosity for a certain disease susceptibility now don't try to be looking at the grammar pick the most important fragment from what you are going to do that's what is expected from you in an assessment so you're saying in a small community in your local government of origin pick that so if you are doing that you would highlight it and so okay that's the first thing they said okay the, the, uh, um, there's a, an increase in the homozygosity highlight that homozygosity and say what for certain disease alleles now, what is the question? It's now saying, as a population genetist, that's here, construct a comprehensive explanation for this genetic shift using the Hardin Weinberg's assumptions with specific mention of your local government of origin. Now, that's one of the problems. They said, with the specific mention of your local government of origin, which, which means if you don't mention your local government of origin, you have not origin. Now, it's also evaluate how two violated assumptions might interact to exacerbate this outcome. Now it's very pathetic that most of you went ahead to use um, generative AI. In as much as AI is good, it is not good for a test condition. I set you up and you fell for it. How would you be telling me that um, assuming you are using a, a hypothetical? No, the, the question says state your st specific mention of your state of origin. So you can't be telling me a hypothetical and then all of you were writing step one, step two. It was too uniform. Obviously, you copied yourself and you were making use of AI. So it was glaring and it was very pathetic. In fact, the scores, the scores were very bad. Well, that's why we're here. Because the goal of a lecturer is not, that, it, 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 not to join the failure of the students, but to ensure that most of them can at least understand the concepts that have been taught in class. Some parts, though, but let's see how far we can we can go so that at the end of the day we know that we have thought and the students have understood now basically if to answer this question it's very difficult thing. now just look at my screen this is actually what was expected of you a very simple thing it said considering this how to answer it considering my local government of origin which is buruku if you're from buruku or you say I, I, i'm taking into account my local government of origin which is maybe otuko or gwe or whatever it is it can be said that it can be deduced from the case study that this is what is happening. And you know, you can deduce it that this is what is happening. Obviously, the question is saying is showing that there's a deviation from Harding Wenbeck's equilibrium. What the what the rule states. And what could be causing this is basically what is evolutionary forces. Remember when evolution sets in. And, 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 and various forces enter into, into the environment. It is the survival of the, it is, it is the most fit that will survive. So basically, it is what you are suspecting. Population. Now you can to, to, to explain the, uh, the particular ones that you feel are affecting that population. And that it, it's very, very simple. If you just explain to you, okay, for example, I, in fact, I, I, I am displaying my. That you see what it's what, what, what it feels like to answer a question, it's simplified. I expect a good pass rate that it went, you know, somehow. So basically, we have no random meeting, which means uh, what you call inbreeding. Some of you wrote it out, but it was clear that you're using AI because your manner of presentation was very vague. When you're answering questions, learn to personalize it, learn to personalize it.
take it into cognizance that okay fine this is what i am doing now see say okay you know to go the rats did in Bruku, the rats did this so you, you know we are so like okay like for what i have seen urban fragmentation may limit mate choice leading to increased inbreeding which elevates homozygosity including what deleterious alleles that, that is disease alleles but how you realize this because i am a student you say this word elevates homozygosity for deleterious alleles in the right population in the Tupo local government area or in Bruku local government area this is how you personalize it so if you're personalizing this thing for a question that says you should be specific argument of origin something is wrong are we together now and that is reduced population size most of you were making attempt but your attempt was they, they were bad you, you you were going off course because you were just copying and the copying it was obvious that that's wrong you don't do that do that now understand there will also there, there will also be what interaction between uh, uh, um, um, the factors that are affecting population so if you check the the, the effect of if population size and random meeting compounds what's to cause at the end of the day is increased homozygosity it means that if those two factors keep acting on the population it will increase the homozygosity of the population and the disease will increase over time this is how you explain it's as simple as that as much as possible be yourself when you are answering questions the lecturer is not out to want you he just wants to quantify you understand what you even if you cram on what you have crammed and that's how you become the best in what you do that's how you pass you now I'm going to be giving specific questions to every program. I expect you to do an assignment this time. So take your time, sit down. Don't just sit and copy your meat. Sit down and understand what you are saying. Write this in your own words. That is what we see when we mark, especially for written articles. Like the assignment that you are doing. For MC, the question is very simple. You're saying, in a okay, hair part is full. Is determined by codominant alleles S and T. The genotype distribution is as follows SM is 100, S is 320, TT is 180. The question says calculate the frequencies of alleles S and T. And question B says based on these frequencies, determine the expected frequencies on the Weinberg equilibrium. Then C say does the observed distribution indicate evolutionary pre pressure? Explain. Now, let me let me be very plain with you. Don't go and start mentioning your student. It is not in this question, please. Students can be very fun. Don't do that. please. For microbiology students, focus on this question. question. Answer them and then we will see you in your face to face question. Which means you should understand what you have written. Meet you, you will explain to me what exactly what you have done, and then we can discuss further from there. For other programs that is zoology, that is PSB, zoology, and the rest of them, it is simple. Yours says in a remote population of 1,200 birds, a feather colored gene exists with two as capital than B and B, smaller than B. Now, after an environmental disaster, the genotype is 300 birds with B, this is the distribution, 600 birds with B, B, uh, homozygous combination, then 300 homo homozygous recessive combination. Now, the question says calculate frequencies for B, B. and question is, is this population in a where best equilibrium justified using of expected versus observed genotype frequencies this cost this cost for research go and research and and know what you are saying these things you know it's usually said that it, 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 it we, we, we ask a simple thing and this is not even complicated this is simple just open your heart and learn as much as possible to be expect to see something good better make your proud and i sure we want the best for you thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you in a week time i would communicate our submission to your class rep be sure you come in person thank you very much